G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. If you missed the last episode, the uh, upgrade to the Z-axis lead screw on the lathe, link up there now, go watch that first, then come back and watch this one. Now before we get on with this week's episode, uh, I'd just like to once again thank all of the new subscribers who who discovered me via the spin in indexer and uh, I sincerely hope that the last three videos didn't lower your expectations of this channel but they were just things that needed to be done so I had to get in and do them uh, now once again before we get on with this one next well, while you're watching this video I will most likely be up in deepest darkest North Thailand for the first time in about 13 or 14 years uh, up until I think it was 1st of June or 1st of July last year when my poor old dog died he was my excuse for not going there uh, because in all honesty I don't much care for the place and uh, I don't really want to go up there but uh, I've had to agree to take my wife up there this year and I could be gone for a week or two and uh, so this this will probably be the last video for a week or so early in April uh, I'm actually cheating a bit we mid-March at the moment so uh, I'll follow me over to the bench over there and we'll get on with it and show you what I got in mind for this video and uh, I did search YouTube and I found not one video on this subject over there alrighty so I've now got a spin indexer and I'm hoping it will make uh, you know it'll be useful for me to make things with but I started thinking about its limitations and the fact that the biggest collet I can get in this thing is 20 millimeters. So, you know, it's kind of restrictive as to what I can do with it. Now, the next step up from one of these things is a dividing head. And I don't know that I have, uh, you know, that much use for one and, and or can justify the expense of buying one. So in my you know, lying in bed trying to get to sleep episodes, I came up with an idea as I want to do. And I lashed out and I bought a six inch chuck well sorry a four inch chuck not a six inch chuck uh, i could have used my five inch chuck uh, off the lathe but decided that you know you don't really want too much weight hanging off this damn thing so i've got a four inch one which you know allows me to get something much much bigger in here so what i intend to do is machine up a shaft it will fit up in here so it'll have a little a 20 mil uh, bit on it that fits inside and locates it the taper that's on the inside in here that's on these pollets right? so this is the same taper as that and a flat section that will sit up in here inside the ring so that i can do it up and lock it up now i don't want to be screwing that up against this lump of steel that i'll make it out of so i've got this lump of aluminium that i uh, cast up a while back that's out of one of those uh, fish tins and i'll make an aluminium thrust washer that will sit in here just a you know one or two millimeter stick so that when i do it up it's screwing up against a piece of aluminium and not against not steel or steel and then i will cast up a backing plate because uh, I did think about using steel uh, I mean I've got no hope of fine piece cast iron but I did think about making a steel one but all oh, this is going to be heavy enough it is hanging off the end of there so I'll make up an aluminium one and just do that and it will uh, it will just have a recess in the back I'll machine a recess on here so it just sits over the top of it one bolt probably in the center to hold it all together and I can bolt this to that and that will give me you know, a, a, as they call them here in Thailand, a cheap Charlie version of a dividing head. So the first thing I need to do is get on with uh, making up a, a foam piece to cast that backing out of, because uh, it takes a day to dry, so I'll do that. Get it all dried up, and I'll cast that up first thing tomorrow morning. And in the meantime, I might get on with machining up uh, this thing to fit in here. Alrighty, so that's the uh, foam mould ready for casting tomorrow it's a nice hot sunny day today i'll get that out in the sun get it baked and we'll get it formed up tomorrow but now it's lunchtime and we gotta have some lunch all right so i do a little quick side project after lunch and i've made some little nice new little brass wheels for these uh for this carriage that runs up in the rail up in the ceiling for the uh for the camera I used to have these 
little 3D printed wheels in there, they're bloody horrible things. And I'll fix this up so it spins more freely and it'll jam and it's not loose anymore than when it's swinging the breeze. Well that looks like it went okay, so uh, a little while to cool down, god damn I'm sweating profusely out here, it's like a million degrees, especially standing beside that fire. Alrighty, let's see how we fared. Well that's uh, it's come up pretty good. We've got a bit of leakage here, but that doesn't matter because all that's got to be cut off anyway. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, this was a sardine can. It's just completely melted, the bloody thing. Unbelievable. I was hoping to get a little, uh, like a rectangular or 300 corners uh, block out of it, but it just melted it. Unbelievable. Anyway. Alrighty, that little side project yesterday uh, turned into a much bigger side project than I thought and I never got back to this. But anyway, so that's casting is all done this morning and uh, this is basically what I'm planning on making. I am considering uh, doing some pre-machining on this because I want to use the solid tool post as much as I can uh, to rough it all out and then I'm thinking about getting out my uh, centre turning attachment between centres turning attachment and doing it between centres and then we'll see how we go with this I want to machine this front set up well all of it down to the uh, 38 millimetres or just above it so I can finish it later if it's running out at all and maybe the 20 millimetre bit on this end before I take this chuck off I want to be able to get the compound slide on and set it to cut this taper here Plenty to come off that yet. I'll bring you back a little later. Alrighty, so that should be just a touch over 38 millimeters. Yeah, 38.2, which is what I was chasing. Uh, still cutting tapers though because this is. 38.4 up there, so it's a 0.2 tape but down the length of that. So I think I'll be going to the between centers. Now I've got a machine uh, 20 millimeters in down to 20.5. It's going to take quite a while, so I'll bring you back when I'm closer to uh, getting down a dimension. Alrighty, that's uh, that's only a couple of tenths above where I want to end up, and this is bloody hot. And the motor's hot, everything's hot, and it's lunchtime, so I think I'll go and have some lunch, let this cool down, and then when I want to come back, we'll finish this bit off. <laughs> That's uh, cool, it's nearly 0.1 smaller than when I stopped. That's, uh, it's warm but not hot. Now, uh, bore of that collet chuck in the spin indexer measures 20.4. 20.46 and this is 20.675 so what's that that's uh, 0.2 to come off it so 0.1 48 so another couple of hundreds. I think I might try and take those couple of hundreds off with some memory tape rather than trying to machine it off. Four seven. Four is that four three. Oh I think we might just a little bit up this end here. Four, three, so it's the same front and back now. So I've got a little chamfer on here. I need to turn this down here, actually from 38 to 33. So I need to take another five millimeters off this, 50 million from this edge. All 
quality. That should be 33 millimetres, the major diameter of an ER32 collar. Well, just under a 32.95, that'll do. I'll put a chamfer on there, I'm not going to chamfer that because that has to have a tape cut on it. And once again, that thing's red off. Just thought I'd uh, knock the burr off there because it had a bit of a burr on it. Well, I hadn't uh, intended to put the collet chuck on here because I don't have a lot of faith in it. I think I need to make a new back for it. But this has only got about three hundredths of run out in it, so I think I'll use that. I'll have to move that other link. I'm going to have to go and change this battery. Alrighty, so I've got a uh, new battery and about 45 minutes we're off to go and get my daughter from school. So I'm going to knock this down to 38 millimetres and then I have to machine the front of it down to uh, something that'll fit through here fairly neatly. So it's 27 mil there. We'll make it about 26.8 or something like that. Awesome looking finish. I was bang on 0.06 over me with that. Right, oh, now we have in machine in 10 millimeters. Millimeter to come off it. Well, you can hear that the motor is getting slower and slower and slower. It was running at 1800 flat out, stand to 1300. Anyway, I've got to take 0.2 off here. I think I'm going to take that as a warning sign. I'm just going to chamfer that edge and that edge and give it a call and a miss for the day. Let this all cool down. Been pretty working pretty hard today. Oi. What's going on there? Nothing stopped and it doesn't want to run all right looks like we're done for the day i'll have to have a look tomorrow morning what's going on all right that's that Alrighty, so i spent forever messing around with that this morning i'm within a couple of hundred so i'm gonna leave it at that when I came out this morning, I turned this thing on, hoping that, you know, everything had cooled down might be okay. Nothing. Then I went looking for my multimeter. Couldn't find that. So then I uh, pulled out, because this is a DC motor and it's got a little, uh, I got what is it, a rectifier, whatever they're called, converting AC to DC. I thought maybe that shit itself. So I just grabbed the lead out of the cupboard and hooked it up directly so I was bypassing all, all the speed controls and everything else. That didn't make any difference. And I was just getting ready to pull all apart and go and try and get some parts and I uh, don't know why but I flicked a switch and the motor started. It all seems to be working okay now. So uh, I'll get that off there and we'll get started on cutting the taper. Alrighty. I'm glad I got that casting done yesterday. It was raining here this morning. Anyway, let's get on with this. Is that slowing down again? What is going on here? I have no idea what is going on here. I'm starting to wonder if it's the electronics for the speed controller. I really have no idea causing it. Anyway, I'm going to push down on while it's still running. Right, there it goes. It just died. All right, I've come to hold again. Well, I'm going to uh, going to go and buy a, a new. I'm just trying to think of the word for the the converter, AC DC converter, and see if that's the problem for starters. And then I'll, if it's not, I'll look into other things. Alrighty, mm -hmm. after not being able to figure out what the hell was going on, I decided to switch back to the washing machine motor, which is all still fitted up and all wiring still there for it. So it was a relatively easy job to swap it over. But I had to pull the motor out and replace it with the idler shaft. And then just after I pulled the motor out, I thought, well, I might check the brushes and see what they look like. And it may well be the problem. You see, this one's a whole lot shorter than that one. And this one has got a broken spring. So that may well be the problem. I went back down to where I got the uh, rectifier from. They must have had 50 different types of brushes there, and this was the closest thing they had to it. So uh, you can see that the fitting on the top's bigger, and the brush is just a little bit thicker and a little bit wider. But I should be able to get this down to the right size, I think, with uh, with the diamond stone, and then I'll just uh, unsolder that 
and put this cap back on it and just swap this one over for the time being and see if that fixes it. By Jobs, I think I've got it. That's just running it through this, plug straight into the 220 volts. The question is, will it do that in the machine? I'll fit it up and find out. I'm starting to get the shits with this thing now. I just plugged everything back in, still had all the covers off, this face off, all the covers off around the back. Everything was working perfectly, so I put all the covers back on, fired it up, I was about to make a video and say, right, let's finish this thing, and nothing. Bloody nothing. I don't know what's going on here, it's got me stuffed. Truly hate electrical problems. Alrighty, after a couple of false starts, I think I may have finally found the problem. I thought maybe it was the switch, so I decided to uh, to replace that because I had a new one in the cupboard. And while I was doing that, one of the wires broke off this uh, potentiometer, so I resoldered that back on there. And looks like it's all uh, all good now. So we'll keep going with this. Get this finished. Get late in the day. Uh, I'm thinking I've stuffed up there. I haven't because it, it needs to be machined back here a bit, and I just wasn't sure how far. So, I think I'll change the tool and machine that back a bit. God, what a waste of a day. I just love days like this. So even that's just taking a stab in the dark, so I really don't know how thick where that needs to be until I get to try it out. I'll swing this tool around a bit. Still can't get up in there. Well, I think I'm going to need to uh, get that out of there and try it in the chuck to see uh, see what it just what's going on here because it just doesn't look right. All right, well, I'm going to call it quits for today. Do some more tomorrow. Already after yesterday's <laughs> electrical shit fights, I got in and did a little bit more this morning while you weren't looking. I've polished all this up, thinned this out and realised that I've actually stuffed this up. There is too much length here and not enough length there. Because when I put it through the nut, it doesn't really stick out very far. So uh, I've come up with a plan. So this morning I bored the face out there and I've threaded it M10 and I'll make a uh, piece out of this that comes through the aluminium. It sits up into here because we're only going to have about two millimetres of engagement into the back of the aluminium faceplate. Anyway, this all fits up in there okay. There won't be any room for uh, for the aluminium washer I was going to make, so I'll have to just go steel on steel. I'm going to make a little thin copper washer or something like that. I've got some thin copper here. But that screws up on there okay. Uh, but it's no noise Sunday today, so I'm going to have the rest of the day off. It's stinking hot anyway. Anyway, this and, uh, that's all for today. I'll do some more tomorrow. Alrighty, so if you're wondering why that first one ended up in the box of shame and despair, I had to rework it, and I really should have done what I've just done then, and done it between centres, because the hole in the centre, even though it was, you know, properly in relation to the outside, when I rotated it, it was going, whoop, 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 <laughs> because I think the table was wrong. So that's why I've, uh, I spent yesterday afternoon, instead of having the afternoon off, I remachined it. Uh, it's actually made from the smaller bar that I was going to make the piece to go in the front. Roughed it all out yesterday afternoon and then put it between centers to finish it. So now we can bloody move on with machining this thing up and getting it finished.
Well, that's a bummer, that is. I was hoping to end up with no inclusions in this one. I made it, I made the piece of foam 105 millimeters, but it actually only came out, shrunk so much, it ended up 102 millimeters. Otherwise, I think I would have got these things out of here. Bugger. Anyway, that's life. Just under 100 there. Alrighty, so now I've got to go in 4 millimetres down to 72 millimetres. That'll be boring as I'll bring you back. Well, I'm going to call that a win. Six. I'll just dress that up a little bit and uh, turn it around and do the other side. Alrighty, pretty happy with that. I thought I'd save you all the uh, boring bits and leave the boring bits for you to watch. This, where these, these uh, little holes are here, they're from where the sprue was, and I'm convinced that what that is is the foam gassing off and, and coming up and these bubbles they're bubbles coming up from down inside and they just don't make it out the top I mentioned this before uh, this 10 mil spotting drill generally cuts a 10 millimeter hole generally don't cut oversized if I shove a nine and a half mil drill up there and a 10 mil reamer I'll end up with an oversized hole and that is 10.1 well, I just want to stick a 10 mil bolt through that now I need to bore that out for this to fit in there so uh, that's going to take a while I think so I might bring you back later I'm going to have to cut some of this off it's way too long I did that deliberately after making the other one too short so I'll bring you back when I get a bit closer to having this thing ready Jason 26 and a half Oh shit, that's too big. She used as well as stop there when I did. That's it there. Tight. Down this end is where it cuts tapers, but I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to play with that. That will uh, only end up too bloody loose if I start piss farting around with it. Well, theoretically, all I've got left to do with this is just to just clean this up outside up. Just a little tiny mark there where the two machining marks come to. At this point in the video, I'd like to thank my patrons for the continued support. It's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. You can sign up down there and toss me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to become a patron, there's always buy me a coffee. And there's a QR code on the screen there. You can scan that. Or there's always that thanks button down there. Alrighty. Thanks in large to uh, these electrical problems, I think. This video has dragged on a bit too long. So while you weren't looking this morning, I drilled and tapped that. M10 and shortened it up five millimeters. This afternoon I made up the aluminium washer that goes with that. And this morning I've drilled and countersunk the holes for the chuck. So let's put the damn thing together, shall we? we screw on there. Be nice. This is definitely a nice fit on there. Oh, 
to lock that thing up and stop it from spinning. Then we can lock this one up. Bottom chuck to it. Oh my god, I'm sweating profusely here. Shopping day to day, so get to walk around in some air conditioned comfort for a while. Around 11 o'clock. Alrighty, so there we have it. Spin indexer with a three jaw chuck on it. So that'll make it a lot more useful. Now, as far as bending a little heavy end, this end, push comes to shove, I could always make up uh, a little carrier with some wheels that would run on here just to support it, you know, so that's an option. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching me build that, uh, just something a little different, like I said, uh, I could not find another video on this subject anywhere on YouTube, so no one's bothered to try and do it before. Maybe I'm the only one stupid enough to have a go at it. Uh, now, as far as not having a video next week, because I'll be up country, my wife and uh, let me know yesterday that we're not leaving now until the 12th of April, so that gives me time to do one more yet before we go. But anyway, if you enjoyed watching me make this, make sure you give it a great big thumbs up and smash that like button. I really do hope you enjoyed watching me make it, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.